Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. If you give with one hand and then take away much more with another, it is a sleight of hand and a magician's trick. My topic today is mandatory vaccines versus our civil liberties. As COVID-19 spread across the globe, citizens were told time and again that there is no known cure and that the only way we can all go back to normal life is if we go the route of mandatory vaccinations against the disease. Though several studies have shown the effectiveness of a combination of drugs and even local herbal blends, such as the one being produced for consumption in Madagascar. Just over a week ago, the Nigerian people learned that the House of Representatives has resumed consideration of a bill to repeal the Quarantine Act and enact the Control of Infectious Diseases Bill. The bill has already gone through the first and second reading with no public hearing. The speed and nature at which the bill is being pushed through has raised suspicion. The issue of vaccination as contained in part three and four of the bill is causing great concern on social media for the following reasons. Clause 31 makes it mandatory for anyone on an international voyage to be vaccinated. And Clause 48 reads that in an outbreak or suspected outbreak, the Director General may be may by order direct any person or class of persons not protected or vaccinated against the disease to undergo vaccination or other prophylaxis which within such a period as specified. The members of the House who raised the alarm pointed out that the contents of the bill fitted perfectly into some conspiracy theories that are being peddled on social media locally and internationally on the intention of some suspicious global power interests to create vaccines, forcefully make people accept these vaccines and go further to implement the means of identification by way of chips, implants, or any other means they deem fit to identify those that have taken the vaccines. As a strong proponent of freedom of choice, I am not comfortable with mandatory vaccination. I believe this goes against our individual civil liberties. It should be an individual choice whether to take a vaccine or not. There is some evidence that vaccines have caused health complications and even death. The Indian government filed a case against the Gates Foundation due to the complications and death that occurred in 2009, soon after the administration of HPV vaccine on 120 girls without proper consent. On this basis alone, Vaccines should never be forced. Full consent must be sought prior to. I, for one, haven't found the flu vaccine to be effective. I have had it twice, but still got the flu, and it still kills roughly between 291,000 and 646,000 people globally every year. There is also still an ongoing debate whether the MMR triple vaccine is responsible for autism. With all these to consider, I propose no vaccine should be mandatory. The public should be given as much information as possible regarding the vaccines to aid comprehensive decision-making. Also, adequate compensation must be put in place in case the vaccine is found to cause any adverse effects or even death. Okay. 
I'm jumping in mm. there uh, quickly because um, I just want to offload my own bit and then I'll see what <laughs> other people have to say. I mean, generally, I agree with you that, um, you know, um, there's something very suspicious about the f speed with which this bill was, you say, accelerated. And it, it's just so ironic that when we have things that need doing swiftly, we don't get that kind of reaction. And then when it comes to something like this, see how quickly it was escalated, showing that we have the capacity. So there's something dubious about the motive behind it. But thankfully, I think there's enough of an uproar that things have, you know, it's had to be put on ice, at least for now. But the issues I wanted to raise very quickly were, I think vaccines generally um, are known to work better when they're taken in a collective. So that doesn't mean I'm saying you should force someone to take a vaccine, but I think it's dangerous for people to feel they have the option to opt out because if, for example, uh, let's say polio or any of these vaccines, people started saying, well, I, I feel like, I don't feel like. You can imagine polio can become a very dangerous thing once again. So the reason we're saying things like polio are behind us is because there was a collective a consensus that everybody be vaccinated. So even with the uh, autism, and I have experience in that at least, even when I have my suspicions, I wouldn't necessarily be an advocate to say opt out. So what I tended to do with my children because of my experience was I broke it down. I still made sure they had the measles, mumps, and rubella, but I didn't give it collectively because I was suspicious that maybe the collective had an impact on their immune system. But I wouldn't necessarily, I would never advocate that someone opt out of vaccines because I think that's a dangerous and a slippery slope. And then just to end it, I feel the whole issue of conspiracy theories, I tend to, again, I'm not interested in conspiracy theories because that's a whole area of shadows. And once you go down there, you're open to manipulation. So let those people who want to dabble in that dabble in it. Let's deal with the hard facts in front of us. The, thing, the known facts tell us that even as it stands, that bill is a dubious bill. Yeah, um, that's, I think that's where um, uh, Uche, Uche is coming is from. Coming from um, because um, <laughs> when, when it is shrouded in um, so much uh, secrecy and you're so much in a hurry, you know, to push it down the throat of people that you want to vaccinate. And then there's need to raise suspicion. And then also, if um, allowed to see the light of the day, you're, you're talking about opting out. Yeah, well, I also agree <coughs> that um, if there is enough information, if, if you give people enough information, then they will make up their mind to say, okay, no, I won't opt out. But when there is no information at all, and then there is no option to opt out, what if it, it, it uh, causes death? You walk, you know, boldly into your own debt. Uh, so if you look at the, the, the bill from section 12 all the way down, uh, it, it's, um, it, it's, it, it's um, a totalitarian bill, having been copied from, from, Singapore. from <laughs> Singapore, Singapore that practiced um, a, a, a one, party, one party government in 1977, if you remember Lin Kuan Yew. And then, you know, so there were no opposition and the people didn't have a say. In what happened even that bill that law had been amended in singapore and but here we are going back to copy what they have even updated mm. a situation where you even you know take away the right of people to challenge the decisions mm. so made and if the decisions go wrong there are no room for compensation mm. and you cannot challenge you, you can't challenge them you can't sue them even if even if a member of the disease control team makes a wrong decision you know he cannot be sued for it and the decision of the minister in as far as that bill is concerned is final you know so all of this if a whistleblower gives information and that the uh, disease control feels it's um, adversely at affect uh, 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 that, that affects you know the organization adversely that whistleblower be a journalist can also you know be taken and arrested without warrant yeah. so when you put all of this together you ask yourself uh, is if this a, a bill that is ready to actually vaccinate people and cure them from a disease or a bill that is actually pushing the people down the line you know of the disease and, and, and so when you look at all of this then you can say that let people have a choice even if the bill must see the light of the day i, I think i think that um you know you've you've actually highlighted all of the problems with this bill and the problem with our lawmakers is that they approbate on one hand and at the same time reprobate. Yeah. Now, the Constitution is there as our guiding light. Yeah, exactly. Guiding light. This is the grand norm of the country. And so any law you are to make should be in, in tandem mm. with the Constitution. So now the Constitution on the one hand says there is freedom of choice. You lawmakers who are supposed to actually make our laws gather together, seek to deliberate a law that deliberately takes, takes the right choice. of citizens. Mm. It's absurd. The, the problem I see here is the one of a new world order where everything is questioned by everybody, even when the experts have spoken.
everybody is talking about what if the vaccination does this to me, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, if we don't vaccinate everybody, how are we going to be sure we're going to eradicate something? That's number one. Okay. Number so two, have you read if you're asking... Bill? No, no, he's making a general asking, point. Mm. Huh? No, go if on. You're asking what it, if, if you're asking what is in the va vaccination, have you ever asked a structural engineer what's inside the columns and beams in your house before you moved in and be sure that the house will not collapse on you when you're sleeping? You Good don't point. because you have trust. Yeah. It's only through trust that so we can trust, do things. It's the trust so issue if, that's dubious. So that's if, the process, yeah. if the process of Chuka, the vaccination... Chuka, let me your argument when you're done. Yeah. Uh, go, go on, Chuka. Go on. If it, is, if it is shrouded in secrecy, then that's one problem. But I think we're beginning to become too outspoken. I think this politically correct world is disintegrating the world. And that's why we, we pick on certain things and just refuse to accept anymore. I keep wanting to understand this thing. If people are vaccinated, what is their problem with those that are not vaccinated? It, it, brings, you know, down, it brings down the immunity. In a, in a sort of, you know, if you're looking for a, a uh, what do you call it, herd immunity type of, it, it's an artificial form of mm. herd immunity. So the more people opt out of the vaccine, the more ineffective it is. It means that those people okay. are open to developing that disease and essentially everybody is vulnerable. So it's all or nothing. All right, no problem. Yeah. But if, if they give the right, they're not giving information. The reason why one has to look at the conspiracy theories and all those things is because of the nature and the speed at which this bill was passed. Okay. Well, beyond conspiracy theories, I think we all agree that preserving civil liberties speaks to fundamental human rights. After the break, Libros is on the trail of a similarly fundamental issue that is at the foundation of our social contracts.